Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, good to see you. Pleasure. Okay, this is episode number 98, and it's Free Will, What Sam Harris Gets Right and Wrong, Part 4, okay? Because we're devoting four shows to this amazing book that Sam Harris published on March 3rd, 2010, because Harris happens to be a three times New York Times bestselling author, and so like, so basically we've been critiquing it, and we might as well just like get started with it, okay? So like, um, again, he's, this is like a landmark book, you know, like, you know, and now he's published a couple of books on this topic. I've published one. There's a few others, but these others are all self-published. Can't take credit hey, for Hey, wait it. a minute. I can't see like which light is on, what, what camera I'm talking into, but that's all right. We keep rolling. There you go. Thanks. All right. <laughs> see like that. I can all pragmatically right. take credit for my book, but not fundamentally since <laughs> right. the universe wrote it through me. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the thing with Harris is like, this is like Simon and Schuster. Simon and Schuster did this. So this is awesome. All right, so now here's the thing. Now, Harris, he gets the free will is impossible. He gets the both causality and randomness make it impossible, but he believes in randomness. And here's like, I'm going to read a statement on page 29 that he says. He refers to the Copenhagen interpretation. Mm -hmm. And he says, the indeterminacy specific to quantum mechanics offers no foothold. In indeterminacy means randomness, means without a cause. I'm not so sure. You're saying Harris believes in randomness. He may have just written that so, the, so to take both sides. So there's no, you might think there's no so. other alternatives just to address it to the people. No, no, but because like, you know, he's got other sections. But you know what I'm saying? He has to bring it up. Exactly. Some people might say, yeah, so. No, no, he believes it. He well, believes nuts. it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, he just doesn't get this. He's a neuroscientist, and this is like determinacy, indeterminacy is a physics thing, and he's intimidated by the physics. But even if things are random, that doesn't prove free will, so he gets he's, that. he's just saying, in case you happen to believe in randomness, that's not going to help your no, cause. We, we say that, but no, he believes in, in all true right, randomness. All right, but I think he wrote that just to cover all the bases, so to speak. Yeah, well, no, no, because here... All right, thing, tell me. I, or well, there's no script on this show. I'm hearing this for the first time. Right, right. Like it. <laughs> Cause, uh, all right, this is on page 29. Another all thing right. he says, he says, like, evolution, therefore, seems unpredictable in principle. And you want to know something? Because he's buying into the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Well, predictability is a different thing. Right. Because basically what they're saying is like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle makes stuff unpredictable, but it's unpredictable to us human beings and to our machines and stuff. In other words, if you had like to God, if there's a God or to the... Con the Who the knew all the variables and said God knows everything. He knows all... You're right. Exactly. So it's not unpredictable to an objective being. And so, like, so actually, you know, evolution is actually predictable in, in principle. If you knew all the variables. When there's billions and zillions of variables, you can't predict it, but it's still caused. Right. Okay. Come on, Sam. Yeah, but, but again, he's done the world a major service. So Sam Harris doesn't believe in free will, but yet he's probably making all the, taking all the credit for that book. I wonder how he handles that. I know. He takes all the money. I know. Well, we'll probably do the same thing when we become yes. famous. <laughs> Absolutely. Fundamentally... No. Okay, here, here's another thing on page 30. Page 30. Okay. And to the extent that the law of cause and effect is subject to indeterminism. That's like an incoherent sentence, by the way, Sam. Oh, Sam, Sam, Sam. Sam. Quantum. You're so close. <laughs> All right, but he gets it, at least. All right. And to the extent that the law of cause and effect is subject to indeterminism, quantum or otherwise, we can take no, no credit for what happens. So he gets it. He All gets right? it. He gets the main point. But Sam, again, there's like, you know... Cause and effect is not subject to indeterminism. It doesn't make any sense. Right, because think about it, Sam. How could something happen without a cause? That's the thing. Okay, so we got that down. Let's see. But there's a cause for why Sam Harris wrote that. Right. So it still has a cause. Exactly. Which I believe is to address the randomness thing. Whether or not he believes in it, he just wants to take you know cover all the bases of the argument that are all incoherent right and you want to know something i mean we've been giving sam some credit for this stuff and you know like blaming well, him the for universe stuff. compelled him to write exactly it, okay. it was you know he's like so like it's like the universe or god or whatever okay now on page 33 he he shows he doesn't understand that there is no such thing as a conscious will read it all right let's what does he say um know. okay did i create the thoughts of about it that led me to consider physical therapy? No, they too simply appeared. 
This process of conscious deliberation, while different from unconscious reflex, offers no foundation for freedom of will. Okay, you know what the thing here, here he thinks that we consciously make decisions. And, and uh, I, what he doesn't understand, Sam, okay, the thing is, like, if we're basing all of our decisions on stuff, on memories, on principles, on concepts that are in our unconscious, I still can't see the light. I don't know what camera I'm facing. <laughs> So if, let's let's see the light a different way. <laughs> Everything is in the unconscious and the subconscious. Well, well, exactly. What's so, he saying? So Sam, if we had a free will, we would teach this much better. Obviously, we we don't have a script, so right. if we had a free will, this would be perfectly clear. We're proving why we don't have a free. We can't do this exactly right. I don't even understand what you're saying. Yeah, all right. Well, they, basically, if I had a free will, I would get it, right? He's saying, yeah, this process. I would choose to get it. Uh, absolutely. Sorry. This and process. And you would choose to explain it better. I know I'm interrupting. Absolutely. I would choose not. If I had a free, I wouldn't interrupt you every five seconds. Right. It, and it's the universe. The all right, universe go ahead. I want to get this. He says this process this? of conscious deliberation, while different from unconscious reflex, offers no foundation for freedom of will. The thing that he doesn't understand is like. There is no conscious deliberation. All deliberation has to be at the level of the unconscious. And even beyond that, think about it. If like, if the state of the universe, if the Big Bang is, as far as we know, what started this whole causal pro progression, we don't even consciously, unconsciously deliberate. Because like what we unconsciously decide on has been like decided at the time of the Big Bang. He doesn't get this. But even if you were conscious, you're only conscious of a tiny fraction of what's actually going on in your mind. You're just conscious of the last millisecond. You know, each thought is just 99.9999% of your life has to be in the unconscious because you only have one thought at a time. Exactly. I mean, unless you're, you know, one second old. I mean, but as you get older, you can only be, you know, you're only conscious of a tiny, tiny fraction of what, so it, by, by definition, what you just said is true. Exactly. Every decision's in the sub slash unconscious. I like right. to use both. Right. And so, like, consciousness, what is consciousness? Let's just say in? for the people that subconscious and unconscious are basically synonyms to you. Yeah, because... Like, a lot of people use the word subconscious. Right, because what is consciousness? Consciousness is the what unconscious... You're aware of. Yeah, the unconscious focusing, highlighting part of itself. Right. Just like, yeah. And people have... Yeah, he, he, but... But when you say unconscious, you also mean subconscious. Exactly. Okay, exactly. So people have... Uh, stuff that we're not conscious. In other words, like, right, right now, I'm conscious of, like, stuff, but all the, there's all this stuff in there that we're not conscious of. Okay. So, all right, now we go back on to page 40. That's because you can only have one thought at a time. So um, every previous thing that's ever happened to you, your genetics and conditioning, is in you somewhere, but you're not aware of it because you can't be aware of all... I mean, it's a billion different things, so Exactly. Okay. All right, now he, we go to page Actually, 40. Actually, we have to d d define free will and why it's important. We're supposed to, we, we swore oh, that right. we do every start, every right, show that you, way. you want to do it? So, l before we refute free will, this show is called No Free Will. You're probably watching it in Manhattan or Westchester. W I'll let Mr. Ortega tell you. What is free will define it all right free will people who believe in free will believe that stuff is actually up to us that what we say think feel do is up to us you know that that nothing outside of our control is making us do stuff my definition is free will is the ability to make decisions 100 percent independent of your genetics and conditioning oh there's the light number three there you go <laughs> <laughs> Usually we have a camera person here. All right. No, we don't. So, <laughs> Keith is usually... I, okay, anyway, so uh, that's free will. Now, why is this important? We, we said we would start every show with those two, no matter uh, what. Okay. The main thing is truth. I mean, you got this universe who like the, the universe first makes us like believe that the world is flat makes us believe that like the first man was like taken from like a clump of clay and the first woman pulled out of his rib and stuff and so the universe god whatever you want to call it makes us believe that all this stuff is up to us when absolutely nothing is up to us so why is this important truth truth i think it's important because the whole foundation of uh, western civil you know, we're in the united states is based on the false premise. Absolutely. And that's not good for society. I mean, to believe something so false and so vehemently, it can't be good for us to believe something. It's just not true. I mean, it's lo free will is illogical, incoherent, and nonsensical. Absolutely. So why is it important? I mean, everything should change once we get this straight. I mean, people will be a lot more kinder to each other, for one. Arrogance will go away. Envy will go away. Resentment. People won't hate themselves and hate other people. They could fear them, but they won't hate them. So the belief in free will, it might be 0.0001% of your subconscious, but when a 
butterflies out, it can make a huge difference. Absolutely. absolutely. I, I just don't even b understand how anybody could believe in free will. I just can't understand what. It's like, yeah, it's like they're pulling our legs. Because free will doesn't even make any sense. I mean, I know. Like I always say, if I had free will, I could become whatever I want. I could, you know, become a Russian ice hockey player. I've said, actually, I'm thinking recently that I would like to be a Canadian ice hockey player. <laughs> 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 I could. You know, I could be a Portuguese soccer player. Yeah. I mean, I'm too old for all these things. But, I mean, if I had free will, why not? I know. Just, that's but I don't have the causality, so I can't. But people don't get it. I know. I know. I mean, think of something, if you had free will, that you would like to be. I'd be a Manchurian candidate. What whatever that, that is. I don't know. There's a movie. I think Come it's like Orson Welles. I'd be, I'd An be astronaut, like... maybe? I'd be God. What are you kidding? If I had a free will, I'd be God. I'd be running the whole show. There'd be no pain at all. I'd, all right, I'd something realistic pain. that you could do. I'd be, um... That's the thing with free will. It's like there would be no causality. You could do anything. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's go. Go ahead. All, All right. right. So here we are. We're, we're on page 40. I love there's no script. It's just so much better. Yeah, because, yeah. like, it's not up to us anyhow. So, like, yeah. you know. We're All being right. compelled to interrupt you again. All right, what does he say? Page, I don't know. Page 40. This, he's dealing with the state of the universe. We've dealt with this. We've explained this. What I will do next and why remains at bottom a mystery, one that is fully determined by the prior state of the universe and the laws of nature, including contributions of chance. He almost gets this right. I know, Sam! If he, if he didn't write contributions of chance, he would have it perfectly. I know, I know, I know. He's adding that in just to sell books, to, oh, get, no. to get that side. Because if he didn't write anything about randomness, he would get emails saying, hey, what about randomness? So he I had know. to address it. I don't think he could be that. I think he's. A, I've seen some of his videos. Highly intelligent guy. Yeah, but you want to know. He's too intelligent to really believe in rain. He really is. I think he's so intelligent. He put that in there to sell more books. Or see, he's a neuroscientist. Or his, his publisher. Is, is physics is in his field. He's a neuroscientist. Read that sentence again without the including part. The, the, it's right. really correct. Up and see it. Saying without it, he gets it right. And oh, it's, it's important. wonderful. Yes. All right. It's like <laughs> talking dirty to me. I'm <laughs> what, I, what I will do next. Right. And why remains at bottom a mystery. One that is fully determined by the prior state of the universe and the laws of nature. Period. Oh, yeah. Period. That's it, Sam. That's no it. more including the role of chance. Absolutely. Because there is no chance. Absolutely. Sam, think about what sa chance is. Like, there's nothing that happens without a cause. And when you're saying chance, that's what you're saying. You're saying that something's happening without a cause. So yeah, like, he's saying like, something is uncaused. That's right. crazy. And again, he's a neuroscientist. He's Laura, also a philosopher. He has a PhD in philosophy from uh, Stanford. I right, believe. but philosophers don't get this stuff. They're, they don't. <laughs> How come regular people like you and I get this better than half, ninety-nine percent of the philosophers? Know, we're, we're like that's another mystery. We're really bright. We're really smart. It's we not up to us. We, we can't take credit for it. That's the thing. People like to believe what they feel best believing. I feel better believing that I don't have a free will. You know, yeah, most well, people believe in free will because it makes them feel better. I know, but but I. So but I, actually, life is much more wonderful without free will. It is, and you have to get to that point. You have to understand that. You have to under, you, you know work with it. And a lot of these people, you know, they understand we don't have a free will, but they never have really thought about it beyond that. I know you call free will an illusion, but I call it the ultimate in bullshit. Well, no, you're right. It. It's not technically. It's not an illusion. Because it's so obvious. It's, it's giving it way too much credit to call it an illusion. Right. Anyway, I don't want to interrupt. Let's do more. Well, of your yeah. All right. Because technically, technically, it's a mistaken notion. Okay. Fairy tale. So okay. All That's right. Your, so like, I got that from him. You <laughs> right, called yeah. it a fairy tale in the car ride over. And, here. Yeah, we're starting another meetup in White Plains. The fairy tale of free will. Yeah. The, no. No. Uh, outgrowing the the free will fairy tale. Oh, even Absolutely. And another one in Manhattan. Okay, so now on, we're on page 45, and we may not get to the entire book, but we've devoted four shows to it, and so, like, you know, he should be happy. Okay, so here, what he says, he says, speaking from personal experience, I think this is good. I think that losing the sense of free will has only improved my ethics by increasing my feelings of compassion yes. and forgiveness yes. and diminishing my sense of entitlement to the fruits of my own good luck. You got it, Sam. That's it. That's it. Like, you, you get rid of, like, blaming about, like, you know, vindictiveness and, like, you know, they're evil and, like, they deserve to suffer and stuff. And then you get rid of the, the pride, the arrogance. You got it? It's difficult for me to get rid of my pride now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get it. You get it. But that's the, that's the Difficult, thing. but not impossible. No, right. I mean, well, that's the thing. Yeah, because, like, you have to understand. You, you understand the free will is impossible, but it's one thing to understand it. It's another thing to understand it And well implement it into your daily life. There you go. That's, that's what we're doing every day here. Exactly. Yeah. All so right. tell the audience why life is much more wonderful without free will, since a lot of people say free will makes them feel better. Right, because, again, like, you know, you don't have to blame. Like, let's say there's, there's somebody, like, 
who, who was boyfriend girlfriend arguing maybe yeah no no some, okay. somebody in World War Two okay. some, you know yeah, yeah, or Vietnam War or something no no some some soldier right 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 he's in Vietnam and he had to kill like a few people right and he's like 80 years old now and he's had this on his mind for years and stuff he's blaming himself right finally he he reads where like nobody has a free will all of a sudden it's not his fault you all know? that guilt goes away exactly instantly exactly. And if he doesn't get it, he'll think he really messed up and deserves to be punished. Right, right. He's a bad, quote, bad person. Exactly. So we don't suffer the pain of guilt. And then we won't blame others. Yeah. How could one rise above their genetics and conditioning? I mean, how could you even do that? It's impossible. It's totally. That's why free will doesn't even make any, it's not even words that make sense to me. And we've, we've explained this for, in school. You yes. Know, we should go in, all right, in school, what do they teach us? Nature and nurture. Nature and nurture. They teach us this in elementary school, in junior high school, in high school. Nature and nurture. But they never, they never say, all right, because our, our entire behavior is nature and nurture, therefore free will is absolutely impossible. They never get to that. It's, too, it's just so logical that free will doesn't exist. The only thing that, you know, the, the religious argument, which is totally illogical, they, they like to throw that at me. That So we win the secular, oh, logical, absolutely, absolutely. you yeah. know, reasonable argument. But then when they say God gave me free will, we'll discuss that hopefully in the next show. Oh, yeah. Keep well, watching. But today yeah. is about Sam Harris. The next show is about, like, praying to God, how surreal that experience is. So I'm doing an infomercial. This show is about Sam Harris's book, but we're going to get to the religious argument very soon. Absolutely. Next episode. We're, and, of the one you know, do. since like 80% of Americans are religious, we're going to stay with the religious argument. For a few more episodes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the next, one more maybe secular, and then we're going to do like a lot in a row, even on our, the live call-in next week. Oh, yeah. Because we do live every other week from Manhattan. We're going to start tackling the religious argument, because I'm getting a lot of God gave me free will. Definitely, definitely. And we've got the answers to that. Okay. <laughs> Now, on page 46, he gets something else right. Some people say, well, like, if we don't have free will, what's the point in anything? What's the point in waking up every morning? You know, Who says like, that? It's fatalist. You know, it's a fatalist position. You know, life has no meaning. So what, what does he say? He says on page 46, losing a belief in free will has not made me fatalistic. In fact, it has increased my feelings of freedom. <laughs> my hopes, fears, and neuroses seem less personal and indelible. Yeah, he gets it. He gets it. I mean, like, that's the thing. I mean, like, to the extent that we have free will, it's a burden. Well, I mean, books that people read and movies they watch have wonderful stories. They're meaningful. They're already made. So it's, if you rent a movie, whoever's renting a movie tonight, just skip to the last scene. If I mean, nobody does that. You watch the movie. So the joy of life is how the story is told and vice versa. It's a wonderful journey that's not predictable but predetermined. Exactly. I don't see it. It's actually more wonderful because you won't hate yourself as much. Exactly. And again, so it should fight depression. Yeah. If you really screwed something up, you couldn't have acted otherwise. You had no choice. So forgive yourself. Complete absolution. I have to do that every day. You know, and you want to know something? Every... Jesus. I mean, the big thing about Jesus is he came into the world to forgive sins, right? But like, you well, have... I wasn't conditioned to believe he was the son of God, so I don't know what you mean by no, that. No, I know. But I that's... probably believe he was just a person. No, no, no. But a lot things. of people, like, like I was raised religiously, and you know, I mean, I was born Jewish, but I was raised Christian, and they say, you know, Jesus like came to like to like free free us from from guilt you know it, we could be forgiven so but the thing with 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 christianity is like you have to believe certain things and stuff to be forgiven with this it's like we're, we're innocent to begin with there's nothing to forgive I, not I don't really have the causal history to comment on jesus because i wasn't raised that way i mean i you know i know what people say we're, but I, I i just think he was a great person who was a great teacher absolutely uh, that's just yeah. my conditioning how i was raised yeah. no absolutely he had great morals I, yeah but what I'm saying is, like, we're doing what Jesus did, but, like, without, you know, in other words, like, you don't have to, like, believe anything. All you have to understand is nobody has a free will, and we're right. all absol absolved. Okay. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose your gender. You were conceived. Your nutrients was, were coming into you. You were being conditioned from the first millisecond you were here. Right. Whatever your mom ate that day when you were first conceived was probably conditioned your di digestive system. Exactly. If she <laughs> smoked, you might have asthma as a kid, you know. You, you, you didn't. So the first cause in our life was being conceived. We didn't self-cause. Exactly. I don't go back to the beginning of time because nobody will ever answer. I'm just talking about no free will this show in our lifespans. Conception to death. Absolutely. You know, 80 to 120 years. In okay. our case, hopefully 150 years. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, and here's another thing. Like, 
to the extent that like all right listen to this sentence this is page 47 becoming sensitive to the background causes of one's thoughts and feelings can paradoxically allow for greater greater creator creative control over one's life because you really get to know yourself yes if you know how you got your beliefs thoughts and desires and what and um feelings yeah, of course. That would help you a lot. Yeah, you would really get to know yourself. That's Why you do what you do? Because think about it. If you believe in free will, I did something. It, you know, you don't look into the causes. It was my free will. I did it. But like, if you understand free will is impossible, why did I do that? And then why, you know, it's hard like, to know. It's a lot of, you know, it's in your subconscious, unconscious. It's hard to know. Yeah. Absolutely. But but it, you, you can. It would help you a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Here's something we didn't know this before. This is like something good that he's he's making people know. Okay. Page forty eight. The U.S. Supreme Court has called free will a universal and persistent foundation for our system of law distinct from a, quote, a deterministic view of human conduct that is inconsistent with the underlying precepts of our criminal justice system, close quote. Okay, this is like in U.S. versus Grace in 1978. Okay, so like... Oh, that's terrible. That's, I know, so like our whole legal system is founded a universal on... universal what? Um... It's a universal, uh, a universal and persistent foundation for our system of law. It's a universal and consistent, consistent foundation. Yeah. So uh, propaganda and bullshit. It's it's horrible. It's so, so like our entire legal system is based on a huge mistake. You know. A whole new vocabulary and syntax. Vernacular is going to have to be written for law. I mean. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you're the proximate cause. You're the representative cause. You know, we're not blaming you, but you're pragmatically blaming you. You have to go to jail, but don't feel bad because you had no choice. I mean, it can be done. We just have to not take the easy way out and rewrite everything so the words don't have the connotation of stigma to exactly. the criminal. Exactly. So he did wrong, but he's not a bad person. He was just has bad pro pre pro. pro Pre-programming or program? Either Pre way. Both, both, absolutely. And so, like, and your genetics or your conditioning caused you to do what you did, but you got to be punished. Right, and, and, and you're a danger but, to society. But, but don't hate yourself. And and we should, and we have no reason to hate them because like it wasn't their fault. We can we we can maybe hate the universe, but hopefully we don't even have. But to they do still that. go to jail if they're dangerous. You know, yeah, dangerous, you got to do that. But right. they don't. While they're sitting there, they shouldn't hate themselves. They exactly, yeah. exactly. And the important thing about that but is that like, was 1978. Maybe the they've gotten smarter in the year 2012. Uh, I don't know. The Supreme Court really said that. They say yeah. Say it again. It's very important. Okay, yeah. The U.S. Supreme Court has called free will a universal and persistent foundation for our system of law, distinct from a deterministic view of human conduct that is inconsistent with the underlying precepts of our criminal justice system. Universal and persistent fairy tale. Yes. That's what they should say. Oh, horrible. Okay. Univer United now, States the universe will eventually compel this, the, the Supreme Court to get it right. It's just not the right time. And then you ask... And I mean, well, we went in a time machine like 50 years from now. That, that, would, that would be nutty. I mean, that, right. nobody... This is We're just maybe way ahead of the game here, but... It's a matter of time. Right, and then, and you know, as we're talking, it's like we're kind of blaming the Supreme Court. We're not blaming them because they had nothing to do with it. You know, like, it's the universe that made them get it wrong. The timing thing. Exactly. Ev eventually, yeah. Yep. Right. It makes me wonder why the universe has compelled our justice system to be that way for thousands of 300 years or whatever. I know, I know. It's like the universe purposely But we, the universe us. also compelled us to think the earth was flat for a long time. I know, I know. And then we were the center of like the, the yeah. solar system. Yeah, the, the Galileo and Copernicus. So oh, things, yeah. and things have changed just I because know. of, yeah, right. I know, and then, yeah, why does the universe do that? I don't understand. They don't make people like they used to. Everybody's born with something called the Internet now. I think kids are much smarter. This will change very quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Especially because when they start Googling Sam our show Harris, watching us. Right, Sam, <laughs> you, you got this. Sam Harris says that this this change isn't going to happen for years and years, right? That's what he thinks. But, yeah, he, he said not in his lifetime. I think five years. Oh, uh, yeah, because these young Let's kids are Let's watch this show in 2017, 2018. See, see who's laughing now. Oh, yeah. See who's crazy now, right? Absolutely. All right, now we're on page 52, and I've got to know... Three minutes. Right, okay. This is this might be the last thing. All right. You can't see the clock, I don't think. I there. can see it. I can, really? 320, okay. 25, okay. All right. What we condemn most is in another person is the conscious intention to do harm. That's not what we can do. Well, anyway, degrees of guilt can still be judged by reference to the... some premeditated murder versus... Me this is... Get, this, you know, I'm not even going to go... This, he gets a little It's all causal states anyway. If it's premeditated, you know, it's... Right. Yeah, let's let's wrap up. Not. All right. We, All right. We've given them four shows. I mean, there's more stuff that we could talk about. But again, it's a, it's an excellent book. Otherwise, we, we've been critiquing. Not it as good as the Newer Testament. 
Right. Which or, is at Amazon.com. Or Exploring the Illusion of Free Will, yes. <laughs> or my other book, The Total, Complete, and Utter Nonsense but, of Insanity but, of Free Will. But it's published by Simon & Schuster. Yeah, he's the number one guy, right? Absolutely. I mean, because like this before this book, in, in, in 2012, 30 articles by major newspapers and magazines. I mean, Cover like, articles of two. Yeah, well, although they were before. You're saying this is important because he's a bestseller and he's mass market. Everything else was kind of fringe. Exactly. Yeah, so keep and, talking about and that. And, you know, we we got to plug ourselves. I mean, the, the the reason Sam Harris published this book is first because the meetup in Manhattan, and then this show, and then your show in Manhattan. So, like, things have causes, and like, you know. Even if you didn't watch it, we've put that energy out to the universe. Right. Causing the buzz. All right, let's do some commercials. Let's do a commercial for the Manhattan show. A commercial? Yes. When this it's is on. the Manhattan show. I mean, well, I know right, it's no. both. Uh, this is the show right now, obviously, being taped every other week. We're live. 11 o'clock every Wednesday. It's called No Free Will, this camera. No Free Will. We take your calls live every Wednesday at 11 p.m. on MNN 2. Right. And, it's which, and this show was on there now, but we're the tape version. Now the light went over there. That's all right. That's what I'm that. talking. Yeah, because like, yeah, it switches. Ahead. Right. So, yeah. So, like, it's an MNN, you know, Channel 56, Time Warner, Manhattan. You know, this is big. This is big. And, and next year, hopefully, we'll be on, on um, high definition. That's in what Manhattan. they're saying. Yes. Absolutely. Hopefully, we get 756. Yeah, yeah, that is. Because I know cool. the Yankees are in 7:53, and a lot of their games go late. You know, we we got we're not doing anything. If God's got, I don't want to say the universe is compelling us to do this show. Let's see what happens. How big it gets. Right. It's not up to us. We're along for the ride. Because that suddenly the thing. appears out of nowhere. Eminem's telling me they're going high definition. That would be very good for us. We had nothing to do with it. We're just doing the show and whatever happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's a good sign. Yeah, definitely. I'll let you talk for the last minute. You do the commercial. All right. Well, a, a commercial for this show. Why okay. it's important. We're on, we're on every Thursday night here in White Plains, New York, Channel 76, 9 p.m., Okay, and then like I upload all the episodes to YouTube. Wow, you got a good time in White Plains. I never knew that. I know. This uh, is it online too? Can I watch it? It is online. It's online live. Whiteplains.com or what? Yeah, White Plains. It's it's on my website. I've got Just a link. Just tell to me. It. I tell don't them. know. That, it's you White know? Plains Cable. I don't know the <sighs> web address. It's 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 but it's on my website. Go to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Causal and, and Consciousness. You, yes. Causal or the Newer Testament dot net. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so like, so again, like, what we're gonna, we've explained why free will is impossible. We're gonna start getting into these new shows. All right, nothing is up to us as human beings. Who is it up to? What is it up to? And why is it like, why is God, the universe, like, first m making us get this wrong? And why all of a sudden are we, we beginning to get it right? All right, this is George Ortega and L for Exploring Illusion Free Will saying thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. <laughs>